Hello, this is Susan Ashley and I'd like to share with you today uh, some of the insights that I received in our recent trip to Israel and Palestine. It was transformational for me on, on a number of different levels. It was also very transformational for Yanni. Uh, interestingly enough, we still felt the effects of the energy for two weeks after we got home, really strongly, as if we were in some sort of cocoon of what we'd experienced. And uh, whilst I obviously in a short period of time can't explain all of it to you, I'd like to just shed some light on what I felt around the Christ consciousness because I do believe in Jesus. I'm not religious at all, but I do believe in his word and the miracles that he created. And I believe that that was his human name and then he took on the consciousness of Christ or turned into the Christ consciousness after he left the physical body. And so that consciousness remains in the, let's say, the collective consciousness of Mother Earth for us to tap into. And so there's a lot of resistance to tapping into that because of the name that it's been, or the signatures that have been placed upon it. Like, for instance, when you think of Jesus Christ, the first image that comes to most people is him suffering on the cross. So for most light beings, they're not going to be attracted to that. They're not going to be attracted to that image for a start. And when I think about myself as a child, um, there was a period of time that I went to church and I went to a Catholic school and I hated it. I used to scream at the nuns that would teach us and I used to call them, that, tell them that they were liars when they would say certain things because I was having past life memories. And something I, I have never shared, only with my husband and a few, a few really, really close friends, but um, up until I was 15, I used to have visitations from, from Jesus Christ and two of the uh, disciples or apostles or whatever you want to call it. And um, that was very confusing for me. And, and I was told a lot of things about my life and different areas that, um, you know, this is really hard for me to talk because I don't really share this. And part of the reason going to um, Israel was to get over my shit around that because that was the main thing that I, I got attacked on, that people thought I was crazy. And as a result of that, I spent time in foster care and in a home because my parents couldn't deal with it and actually nobody really understood. So they called me an uncontrollable child. I was put on medication. I had a lot of things going on. I didn't have good experiences in those places and I don't like talking about it. It's part of the reason I have a passion and, and developed a passion for healing and working with people who've been abused and ritually abused, who've experienced satanic abuse and um, basically evil um, because that was also part of my healing. Anyway, getting back to going to Israel, so, so what, I, what I realized when I was there that the Christ consciousness is actually awakening but people are afraid to connect with it because we don't want to go into religion and that's been one of the main uh, avenues to touch on it but I can tell you now from what I can see, and I don't care what fraction of religion you're in, I would say 99% of it is a disconnection from Christ consciousness, not a connection. Because you're being told that you have to go through a priest or a rabbi or you know an imam or someone like that to get in contact with it, to know what the truth is. No, 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 the truth resides within you you have access to that Christ consciousness. And Christ consciousness is really an access to universal laws. And what Cassandra's been saying is that we are now in a process of moving from man-made law to universal law. And in that process, we're moving to connect with the Christ consciousness. But the reason a lot of us don't connect with it or even say that we're connected to it and that way we're dishonouring it in a way. And that's what I realised about myself is that 
me not saying it, me not being honest about my connection was creating a separation and it was not honoring that frequency which has helped me through my life, helped me in situations in my life where I thought I was going to die. So I can honestly say that that, that um, energy that Christ left for us is real and it is tangible and we can connect with it. But we have to let go of the stigma of being religious in order to do so. And I think that the religion has been a way of separating us from that. When we think about what happened to Christ, you know, the story of, of Jesus, was that basically the, the, the greater area, people were had to make a decision between a mass murderer, giving clemency to a mass murderer or Jesus, and they chose the mass murderer. So what the collective did at that point was choose the devil. They chose the negativity. They chose evil over goodness. And the amount of evil that's been done in Jesus' name, when we just look at religion, for instance, what they've done to children, what they've done to relationships, what they've done to women, I'm sorry, don't even get me started on that, is evil. And there's no denying, I don't care whether you're highly religious or not, you can't tell me that a religion where a man tells you that your sins are forgiven for beating your wife and raping your children on Sunday and you start again on Monday and it's okay. It's not okay. Where a religion hides the men that do that, it's not okay. And not only that, look at the symbolism. You walk into a church or a Catholic school or anything like that and all you see is someone suffering on a cross, dying in agony. So tell me what the symbol is. The symbol is pain and suffering. And we are connecting with that by going into those churches. We're saying, you listen to a mass, I am guilty, please forgive me. What are you guilty for? I remember as a child thinking, I've done nothing wrong. I remember talking to my friends and saying, oh, what are we going to tell the priest that we, we lied or, you know, we had bad thoughts or something, just so that we could do a holy confession and go to a holy communion we had to admit for sins that we didn't do just so we could do it. It's just too ridiculous for words. Sorry, I need to calm down because I, you know, it's kind of stupid. And we're in a time where political correctness is so strong, we're not allowed to even say that we farted in public, you know. I just, I just can't take it anymore. I have to speak the truth. And the truth is I had visitations up till I was 15. Why did they stop when I was 15? Because I begged for them to stop. Because I really thought that I was, I was insane, that I was a problem. And, you know, because of that, I was sent away. So I associated being disconnected from my family and experiencing evil with the fact that, that I, was, I was being honest about what I was hearing and seeing. So... When I go into, I don't go into churches anymore, but when I used to go into a church and see that vision of, of Christ suffering, it used to really hit me and I think, why am I having to associate this pain and suffering? It's a collective consciousness. So what it's doing is it's reconnecting you day in and day out with the consciousness of pain and suffering. And that vibration is evil. And we have to move out of it. And we have to start honouring the goodness that's inside of us. We don't have to prove it to anyone. But that's what I saw. I saw that religion was binding people to negativity about themselves and about the world and creating separation. We can sit with God. We can sit with Christ. We can sit with angels. We can sit with ascended masters. I actually don't like using that word, but... That, that's, that statement, Ascended Masters, because it, it, it indicates a separation. And I don't like that. But we can sit with those beings, Ascended beings, and we can feel their vibration. We can allow their vibration to pass through us and utilise us, us as a vehicle for their frequency. We can connect with their frequency and bring it down to the earth. 
That's what channeling does. That's what being a medium does. And I think at the moment there's a big awakening around the Christ consciousness because it's around those universal laws and I'd really love it if people would start being honest because I meet people who have had experiences with Jesus, with Mary, with... I mean, the bullshit about Mary Magdalene, don't even get me started on that. That was one of the things I used to accuse the, the nuns of lying about when they used to call her a prostitute and everything. I used to say, no, she wasn't, you're a liar, and walk out of the room. So, and it used to get me in no end of trouble. But I refused to, I refused as a child to acknowledge that lie. Because I'm not about lying, I'm all about the truth. So that really struck me in Israel. And what it did was it reconnected me to that consciousness without fear. And, and interesting, fascinating that I went into churches and different places in order to receive that. It's very fascinating, isn't it? I didn't go into the whole, uh, you know, masses and, and, and talking to the priests and all the holy men and all that sort of thing. No, I didn't do that. I just went in, we went in on our own and experienced the energy for ourselves and, and reconnected in that way. And it's brought for me a great comfort, but it's also brought for me a remembering, a remembering of those universal laws and what I'm here for. And it's for that reason that I haven't done videos because I really needed to process that awakening. I needed to process that information and that knowledge and and be able to bring it out in such a way that I didn't look like a dickhead, you know, because I'm not religious. I think I, I have a very strong thing about religion. And because it's run by men, um, it's one of the reasons I don't like it as well. Uh, and I think there's a lot of separation that goes on in religions. And I don't like the symbology of religions. And I don't like the fact that they say that they forgive sins. It's not up to someone else to forgive your sins. It's up to you. Any person that does something wrong to another person wears that, that mark on their soul. And they are the only ones that can forgive themselves. Look, I've done things in my past, yelled and screamed at people, um, you know, sort of... I'm not a liar, so that's not one thing. I'm very honest. So I can, I can say that I have retaliated at people and I've been resentful at people for various different things, you know harped on about certain things that I feel people have done to me and, and everything in my life. And the only thing that settled that wasn't someone else saying to me, oh, Susan, you know, I'll forgive them for you. It was me, me forgiving them, but me also forgiving myself for what I'd done. You know, one of the things that, that still, I know it's a small thing, but it does stick out in my head. I remember when my son was young, I accidentally slammed the car door on his fingers. And I think every parent that I know has done something like that without, you know, I did, obviously I didn't do it on purpose, but I closed the car door and I didn't realise his hands were still on the door. And still to this day, I feel pain in my body around that. And it doesn't matter how many people will say to me, oh, Susan, you know, that was when he was a child, he's forgotten it by now. And, you know, he's he knows that I didn't mean it and everything it's still to this day because I did that because I was in a moment in my life where I wasn't thinking about him and I wasn't being aware and I hurt my son and I've never I, I, I still haven't fully forgiven myself because when I think of it it hurts still hurts me so that's why I say when you do something against someone else no one can forgive you for that only you can only you can feel the honesty of release from what you've done to another person. So that's why uh, church doesn't sit with me. I would say sitting in that Christ consciousness and allowing the energy and the, the knowledge of Jesus to come in, the gentleness that he represented, 
the healing abilities, that's, that's what Christ consciousness is about. It's all there for you to connect with. You can be that healer. You can be that medium. You can be that channeler of energy. If you're willing to embrace that consciousness without separation. Um, I know that there's more for me to say on this, but this video is going too long, so I need to, to stop. So I just wanted to share that with you, and I hope that, that that helps you to be honest about your connection with whomever you're connected to. But let's get real. No one else can forgive you apart from you for what you've done. No one else can give you those abilities. You have to awaken them in yourself. The only person that creates separation is you because you're allowing someone to tell you you're not good enough to connect by yourself. So on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. And if you'd like to know more about me or make an appointment with me, you can go to my website, lovelightandtruth.com. There's a reason I use the word truth because I believe in the truth. I search out the truth. I hear a lot of things from different people, but I have to see that it sits with me. The truth is malleable in the sense that we all come from different places, so the truth is different for all of us. There are varying levels of truth, and so that's why I put truth in my website and in all of my things. I always say love, light, and truth. Have a great day and um, breathe in that consciousness. Just sit with it and see how you feel. Bye.